Now, there is a way in JavaScript without using compilers or transpilers to have data that's private using closures. So let's go ahead and make a closure example real quick. Closure. Something programmers never get. <laughs> I don't mean JavaScript closures. I mean actual closure. Finishing a project. Ugh. Sorry, projecting. If we have a basic function here, we're going to go ahead and use, I don't know, const and say private cow. So, and this private cow variable here, constant, is not accessible outside. So if we say console.log here, private cow, we can actually log it out. When we run node closure, nothing happens. So if we actually run the function, basic, see it logs out our private cow here our actual variable but there's no way to get to it if we were to log out let's say basic itself console.log basic we can actually log the function but it doesn't have like the variable anywhere it's actually stored inside of it inside of a closure so when it runs it's there and here's the other interesting thing you can even return another function return a function that returns true. And it also does counter.log. Private cow inside, bro. Private cow. And when we log it, it's still a function, but if we call it, you can see that it returns an actual function inside of it. And that private cow is nowhere to be found. So we call what it returns. We can see the private cow is still stored in there, right? So it returns true, but this variable is stored. And this is what's called a closure or an enclosed place for data. It's not just variables. It could be actual other functions as well. But this is one way that we can shield a function from referencing things outside of itself being affected. We have the fetch module in here. It would actually, instead of referencing it outside, we can ensure that it doesn't get hurt by that.